Welcome to another tale from the dark multiverse. This is the comic story in general, where we take some of your favorite comic books, your video games, and your movies, and we break down the lore and stories within into an audio drama, allowing you to experience it in a unique way. The Dark Multiverse is a twisted evil version of the DC Universe, and recently DC has started to put out tales from the Dark Multiverse, taking well-known events within the DC timeline and telling you a dark alternate history of them. Today, we will be telling you the story of Infinite Crisis. Tempest Fugonaut watches the crumbling earths of the dark multiverse, and he turns his watchful eyes upon another world. On our world, a crisis was stopped only when some of the greatest heroes from the new earth and those that had fallen had come together. On this earth, only one hero saw the crisis before it arrived, Ted Kord, but he was killed before he could act. Yet, what would happen if Ted Kord did not die. Tempest turns his eyes to an Earth where these events have played out. The hand of the Omac drone grasps Ted around the throat, choking him. He's flung carelessly across the room, cracking hard into a wall. Falling to the ground, he slips into darkness. And when he awakes, he's restrained, kneeling in a dark room with blood dripping out of his mouth as he struggles to his feet. This is why I want you, Ted. You never back down. Maxwell Lord tells him from across the room, a smile upon his face. He crosses the room, telling Ted about how he has agents across the world and the Brother One satellite in the sky. And then he sighs, standing, pulling out his pistol. All I want is to put Earth's destiny in the hands of humans, not the people pretending to be human. You want me to join you? That's why you're telling me all of this join or die time? Ted asks, and Maxwell Lord nods, aiming his pistol at Ted's head. That's it exactly. Ted lowers his head and he agrees. Fine. You win, I'll join. Maxwell smiles, lowering his pistol, and he orders the AI known as Brother Eye to release Ted from his restraints. Ted stands quickly, swinging the heavy metal restraints and cracking Maxwell Lord across the face. That sounds great, Max! He picks up the fallen weapon, aiming it at Maxwell Lord's face, but the villain just smirks. He's known Ted for years and knows that he will not pull the trigger. That gunshot echoes through the room as Maxwell falls to the ground, a look of frozen shock remaining on his face. Brother One begins to sound the alarm and Ted turns to the monitor, trying to reason with the machine. You're smart, aren't you? More than smart, you're sentient? He asks. He tells the computer to search its databases for Ted Cord. He wants the computer to see the man that he is. Maxwell Lord promised you that you would help save the world and I can help you do that. A voice then sounds from behind him and Ted turns to see Sasha Bordeaux, the Black King. Ted reasons with her and tells her that Maxwell had the right idea. The world has gone dark and it needs heroes, needs saving. Will you help me, Sasha? Through a viewer in another reality, a group watches the scene unfold. That's the spirit, Superman whispers. Two weeks pass and Booster Gold is running through the halls of the Justice League Watchtower on the moon. He charges into the control room, demanding to know where Blue Beetle is. Wonder Woman, Superman, and Batman all turn, demanding to know what Booster is even talking about. He yells at them, telling them that Blue Beetle came to each of them with intel that he had uncovered, and they each blew him off. You should think for a second about who you're threatening, Booster. Batman warns him, but Booster finally storms out of the room, telling the team that whatever happens to Beetle is on their heads. He's not wrong, Clark, Diana states, turning to Superman. I know, Diana. Later, Batman meets with Sasha Bordeaux, his mole within the Checkmate organization, and she fills him in on what Ted has accomplished in the last two weeks. Using the Brother One satellite, Ted Kord has uncovered an international secret society of supervillains that are led by Lex Luthor. From there, he learned of a second rival group of supervillains and recruited them into Checkmate, creating his own Secret Six. He's been able to deduce the identity of their ringleader, Mockingbird, but give him a few days. He discovered that Jean Loring had gotten her hands on the Black Diamond of Eclipso, but he managed to take her and the diamond into custody, and then he sought out the wizard Shazam, asking how to control the power of the Spectre before he got out of control. This is unnerving, Sasha. You should have come to me sooner. This is too much power in the hands of someone not up to the challenge of wielding it. And from the shadows, a voice interrupts them. <laughs> Harsh, Batman. Ted steps out, telling Sasha to leave them be. Yes, Black King. She nods, and Batman looks on as Ted explains that the Justice League doesn't understand how bad things have gotten and how much worse they could have gotten. I need to speak with the League. We're going to want a voice in the process. With all due respect, that's not going to happen, Batman. This is my problem, not yours. Stick to Gotham City. 
Ted begins to walk out with Sasha shadowing. You're going to need to answer for the death of Max Lord, Batman growls, and Ted stops turning to his former ally. Maybe it's time that Bruce Wayne answered for the large number of crimes you've committed in that cow. Or you can keep your distance and let me work, Bruce. The choice is yours. Later. Ted sits within Checkmate Castle in the Swiss Alps with Booster Gold standing before him. Behind him, the monitors of Brother Eye watch on. I'm glad to see you. I'm glad you're all right, Ted tells him, and Booster is trying to figure out what is even going on. Ted, I got blown up, and when I came to, nobody had heard anything about whether you were alive or dead for weeks, Booster tells his friend. Quickly, Ted fills him in on the events that have taken place, about how he's doing work that is bigger than anything they've done before. You were the one that told me what made us special was that we were the little guys. That we weren't these high and mighty gods, Booster. Ted smiles, pulling his mask off to show Booster his face. Booster, it's still me. I'm still an ordinary guy. That's what this is all about, he tells him. Booster pulls off his own mask, his face showing concern for his friend. The Ted I've known would be scared of the power that you've consolidated here. He would have never gone this far. But Ted tries to make his friend understand. Understand how close they came to a crisis unlike any the Earth has seen before. The Justice League were too busy fighting with each other to even notice, but I did. And now I'm doing something about it. Because I'm the only one who can. You sound like Max. You know that, right? Booster points out, and for a moment, anger flashes across Ted's face, and he seems to be masked in the shadows. I am nothing like Maxwell Lord. Maxwell was going to make this so much worse, and that's why I had to kill him. Shock crosses Booster's face as he looks at his friend, but once again, Ted tries to ask Booster to join his cause, to help him uncover the identity of the Mockingbird. But Booster pulls back on his mask, opening up one of the high windows in the castle. Sounds like you've got it under control. He tells his friend as he flies away. Later, Ted flies the bug airship through the Arctic, his checkmate squad behind him, and he calls over his shoulder. Zeroing in on the Mockingbird's signal. We need to keep focus. Using the bug's lasers, they blast a hole in the secret base's ceiling, and they fast rope descend inside. The team moves quick and quiet, weapons at the ready, and Ted rounds a corner, stopping short in surprise. Lex Luthor is laying on the ground in front of him, dead. His neck twisted around at a strange angle, and nearby, Deathstroke is in a similar position. Oh god, Sasha gasps. Something ripped Black Adam in half! Ted nods, telling her that he doesn't know anyone on Earth powerful enough to do that. This Earth, perhaps, a voice calls as the door opens to reveal Lex Luthor. The team aims their weapons, surprised to see that there are now two Lex Luthers, and suddenly a blur passes through the room, and Ted looks to find his entire team dead. How? You murdered them all! He gasps, and the blur stops revealing an angered Superboy. It's all your fault! You ruined everything! He yells, eyes burning with anger. Lex warps, revealing his true appearance. My name is Alexander Luther, he tells Ted as he begins to float. I am the son of Lex Luthor of a world once designated Earth-3. Quickly, Alex tells Ted of the former crisis, of their plan to remake the world as it should be, to create a perfect Earth. You would end billions of lives? Ted asks, staring at the two of them in shock. As they gloat, a voice echoes in Ted's head and his brother Eye asking for Ted to give him autonomous control so that he can eliminate the two of them. No, stand down, brother Eye, so I can handle this, Ted thinks. And finally, he turns to Luther, explaining that he can create the perfect Earth if he had their power. In a few weeks, I've done more to build a better world than you've done in years. And if I had your kind of firepower, I could make it count. I could make it last. Alexander raises an eyebrow to him. Do you really think that you can berate me into giving up? Ted shakes his head, looking over the man's shoulder. I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to the person with the power to save the world. Alexander turns, surprised to see Superboy considering the hero's offer. He's right, Alex. You've been playing dress up with supervillains while I've actually been helping people. Superboy snarls, and Alex smiles, his arm transforming into a kryptonite cannon. I was always expecting that I'd have to finish this myself. Suddenly, the group is interrupted as two people walk in, and Ted looks on at the elderly versions of Superman and Lois. Pity. You would have been useful in what was going to come next, but I suppose it was always going to end this way. Alexander sighs, turning the cannon on the pair and firing. The radiation hits the elderly Superman and Lois, burning their skin from their bones and killing them instantly. Superboy screams in anger, turning his heat vision on Alexander and incinerating him. Ted stares at the smoking corpse as Superboy runs over, cradling the remains of his two friends. They were so good, Ted. They were so much better than the rest of us. Ted comes over, putting his hand on the young man's shoulder. I promise you, we'll make a world that this Superman would be proud of. 
He then orders Superboy to bring the monitor's tuning fork back to the checkmate castle. And in his control room, he has Brother Eye interfacing with it. I want you to compile the greatest threats to the safety of the Earth. Tell me who we need to stop to put the world at peace. The Eye looks on from the screen, processing the data, and finally an image appears and Ted opens his eyes in surprise. The image shows that the greatest threat to this world is the Justice League standing proud. The greatest threat to the Earth are the costumed vigilantes calling themselves superheroes, Brother Eye tells him. But Ted doesn't believe him, yelling at the machine and pounding his fist against the controls. Decrease the superhero population by 50% and you decrease the threats by 50%. The math is complete and absolute. The most peaceful Earths in the multiverse feature no costumed vigilantes, Brother Eye tells him in a cold, calculated voice. Ted stops arguing, rubbing his neck. Then show me, damn it! just show me. Hours pass and Ted finally radios to Superboy in orbit, who's been watching the heroes of Earth, his mind twisted and angry as Ted's voice calls out to him. I need you to take out a target for me and then round up the teen heroes of Earth. He tells him, can you handle yourself? Superboy smiles, his eyes glowing with heat. Yeah, can you? Later, Superman flies to the ruins of the Justice League Tower, where he can find no sign of Jean. He floats back down, joining Batman, who holds the tower's black box, and Diana comes walking in, and the trio mention that they believe that they know who's behind the attack. You can't believe that all of this was him, Diana asks her comrades. Ted Kord is involved. We should have acted to dismantle Checkmate the second he started making threats, Batman growls. But Superman stops them, cocking his head to the side. Something's wrong. I can hear screaming in Kansas. Over in San Francisco, the Teen Titans rush out of their tower, with Connor and Kent falling out of the sky, cracking the concrete. You know, I'm not supposed to hurt any of you unless you resist. Superboy calls out from above, a dark smile on his face. I'm begging you, please resist. The Titans turn, launching themselves at this villain. And on the moon, Ted leaps from the shadows, now clad in armor that he made from the dead anti-monitor. He orders Brother Eye to attack Batman first, and he fires a blast, which Wonder Woman quickly deflects. But Ted Kord moves around her, knocking Batman back before turning and firing a blast of kryptonite at Superman. He tells them, I'm not trying to kill any of you. I'm recruiting. I want to assure you that you'll be a part of what's next. Energy crackling off of Ted. Superman struggles to his feet. Even with new power. You can't defeat all of us, he tells him. But Ted just smiles. Like I said, I'm recruiting. The heroes look down, shocked as the nanites from Brother Eye begin to crawl up their bodies. I've tailored the original OMAC nanovirus to each of your genetic structures. I'm afraid there's no fighting back at this point. Completely overtaken, the three new OMAC drones stand before their master. And with their task complete, Ted radios to Superboy on Earth. Little busy here! Superboy yells back, throwing another hero as he turns his heat vision and melts the flesh of Kid Flash. They resisted, he tells Ted. Superboy lashes out, killing another hero with a punch, and suddenly he looks down as the nanites are crawling up his skin. What have you done? He screams. You weren't supposed to hurt anybody, Superboy. And if you can't be trusted to follow commands, you'll be assimilated with the rest of them. Ted tells him, already arriving on the scene with his OMAC drones. The drones leap into the fight, engaging with the remaining heroes. Omax, deploy the nanovirus, assimilate all costumed heroes. I want as few casualties as possible. He turns on the battlefield though, as a voice calls out his name. Booster Gold lands amongst the carnage as the other heroes enter the fight behind him. That does not sound like the man that I've known for years. The man who doesn't have acceptable casualties. Ted turns, trying to explain to his friend. But the Brother Eye satellite turns, watching the scene, and it requests that Ted give up the emotional centers of his brain so that he will think more rationally. Ted, the thing is in your mind, it's twisting you. It's making you into something you never would have recognized. Booster tries to explain to his friend. You don't understand, Ted yells, explosions erupting behind him. This is about stopping a crisis in its tracks! Booster nods, raising the pistol in his hand and aiming it at his friend, Ted Cord. That's exactly what this is about. He whispers, I'm so sorry. But Brother Eye activates the defense in Ted's new suit, shooting a laser that pierces Booster Gold's chest. He runs to his fallen friend, cradling the dead hero in his arms, screaming as the heroes of the world all fight around him. The work remains unfinished. You cannot act in your current state. You must allow me to fully interface with your mind. I will remove your emotional center, Brother Eye tells him through their link. Ted lowers his head. Yes, Booster would understand. I need to do this for him. Ted suddenly jerks back, dropping the body of Booster Gold, and he stands up. Oh, Max, lethal force is sanctioned. End the battle. It is time that we take the planet. 
The words of Brother Eye echoing out of Ted's mouth, and Tempest Fugonaut watches as the heroes are killed. The Omac drones patrol the planet, now ruled by the being formerly known as Ted Korn. He watches as in the dark multiverse, Ted becomes his world's greatest villain. And there you have it. The Infinite Crisis Tale of the Dark Multiverse. Now, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, there's still two that we kind of skipped over, and we're going to go back to them, which includes the Death of Superman and the Blackest Night versions. Of these. If you're wondering who that Superboy was, that was Superboy Prime showing up for the first time in like, I don't know what, like 10 years, only to get killed off by Ted Kord. What? Anyway, I thought it was epic. I liked this version of the Infinite Crisis storyline. Uh, and I guess I'll see you guys next time right here. If you want more videos, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Turn on that notification. We cover a lot of comic books, video games, and storylines here. And would love for you to be a part of that. And don't forget, you can follow me over at Twitter, at Comicstorian. I'll see you guys next time, right here.